Jamie, hey, today's the Lord's day. We're gonna rejoice and be glad in it. We're so thankful that you've decided to tune in to our services today. We'll begin momentarily. One of our visions here at Bethlehem Community Church is to reach out as far as we can with the Word of God through digital online streaming. But I would want you to know at the same time that these online services could never replace the effectiveness of being involved in a local church and under the direction of a local pastor. And so at your earliest convenience, I would encourage you to come and give us a visit. We'd love to get to know you and to meet you. But until then, we hope that you enjoy our services today and may God bless you with this message. Good morning, everybody. Let's stand together. We clap our hands today. Come on. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let Prepare him room in heaven and nature sing. In heaven and nature sing. We will sing joy. We will sing joy. We will sing. The Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. We will sing joy. We will sing. church how we doing so glad you joined us this weekend Merry Christmas again we're in the Christmas spirit it's here if you're visiting with us for the first time I just want to welcome you to church this morning so glad you joined us in worship 
Hey, just do one thing for us. There's a connection card in front of you somewhere. Would you just fill that out for us? Leave it in your seat, or you could turn it in in the Welcome Center right when you came in. Hey, would you find somebody new and go introduce yourself to them? And would you welcome somebody around you if you would? Hey, if you're joining us online, I'd like to welcome you as well to the stream. Would you go ahead and just uh, share? Share a service. Comment below if you need a prayer request. Comment and tell us where you're watching from. We'd love to hear from you. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere. That we can be forgiven. The weight of all. The weight of all our sin he came to bear. Says Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us, Emmanuel, King Jesus, Savior of the world is born. Emmanuel, God with us, Emmanuel, King Jesus, Savior of the world is born. Tell it. Go tell it. sent from heaven angels fill the sky with highest praise come on Emmanuel Take a look at this video.
Um, that was our fall retreat uh, with our students. We go to Lake Forest Ranch, and uh, the, uh, the Lord just did some incredible things there. The, um, so let's, let's stop for a minute and just give praise to the Lord for all he did through that weekend. The, uh, uh, if your students came, and, they, and the, I would hope and I pray that they came back different. Um, and so we, we, we talked about a lot of that. We talked, the Lord transformed a lot of them. We talked about trying to make that transition back home. It's a little different being out in the middle of 50,000 acres and then coming back home, right? So they spent a lot of time with the Lord, beautiful place. Uh, I do want to share it real quick. One of my favorite things was the, there was a picture of some ladies that looked like they were having fun in a boat. And um, that picture does not do justice. That boat had a hole in it. It was great. So it was leaking. That was Phoebe and Kelsey and them. Wonderful. One of those times the picture looks peaceful, but chaos going on in the background, right? So, the uh, man, but we had an incredible trip. Um, the I, I tell I tell them each year that hey, the we have disciple now coming up at the end of January. I want to encourage you to sign your kids up to come. We'll have summer trips. I encourage you to sign your kids up. Um, I told the first service you can encourage your kids, and if they say no, then just make them, right? And it's, I've never this true story now, and I promise I've never ever ever. Had somebody come that I've talked into coming, just begged them. They're fine, like, fine, I'll come. Talked them into coming, then come back and say they didn't have fun, that they didn't enjoy it. Not one time. I've even made deals with them and said, if you come and you don't like it, you never have to go to another thing. And they've, they've never gone back and said, yeah, it was terrible, right? They loved it. So I encourage you, hey, sign your kids up to go to these things. Be involved. Be involved yourself. Right in Sunday schools and other things, you have opportunities to be involved. All our Sunday schools are out there now, so we can all go to the same place and hang out and eat food uh, and, and enjoy fellowship and drink coffee. And it's it's wonderful. So we can we can all enjoy those times of fellowship together. All right, so be sure to get plugged in in those. A few other announcements: the uh, we you probably have several Christmas parties coming up with your Sunday schools with your kids and students. Uh, be sure to get updates on that on our Facebook page or our website. Uh, or hey, if Maybe you're not involved in Sunday school. Uh, Christmas party is a great time to pop, pop in. You get free food, right? I mean, it'd be there, right? So uh, pop in for the Christmas party, meet, greet people. Um, that's a good time to get to know others when you're in an environment of just hanging out and enjoying food, right? Coffee, drink, and everything else. And so be sure to pop in for those. All right, the uh, greeters, we tonight, I need you guys here at 5.30 to help greet people as they come in. And what they're greeting them for is our Christmas program for our kids. So that's going to be tonight at 6 o'clock. You want to be here. I promise it'll at minimum be entertaining. Minimum. Okay, uh, so I'm going to try and keep my kids off the cross. Okay, and do my best. And so we'll see. The, uh, but it's going to be a great night. Be sure that you're plugged in and here for that. Um, also, of course, if you're interested in cookbooks or devotionals, you can get those inside the front four years. If you have kids for tonight's program, y'all need to be here at 5 o'clock, okay? Your kids need to be here at 5 o'clock. I tried to talk to her, Brooke, and let, letting us drop ours off at 4, but she wouldn't let us. But, yeah, you can drop them off at 5 o'clock uh, tonight, and so that way they have everything set off and taken care of. Hey, our tithes and offerings, we're going to do that a little differently today. Calm down. It's okay. We can do things out of order, all right? So we have uh, tithes and offerings will be at the same time as our manger offering, and we're going to do that at the end of service. Okay, we do that manger offering once a year. This year it'll go 100% to the building, and so what you want to do is, uh, if it's for your tithes and offerings, just notate it on the check, or inside in front of you there should be a little envelope. You can put your money inside the envelope, notate it there. If it's for the manger offering, you can notate it as well. If it doesn't have anything on it, as far as where it's going, it'll go to tithes and offerings. Okay, so the... Um, but anyways, hey church, thank you for coming this morning. We had an incredible weekend last weekend, still recovering, okay, getting older, still recovering. The, um, I pray that your kids were changed. And Lord, hey guys, I just want to tell you this, this is something we took away. Try and spend some time this holiday season just being still before the Lord. Just being still, just listening and praying. Uh, hopefully, you, you get a day or two off and you have the opportunity to do that. And we tend, I know, me and Tori, we tend to be like, hey, we got, we got a couple days. Like, We can go do stuff. We can go here, 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 here. Just take some time just to be still and thank the Lord for what he's done and pray to him and listen. And he tells us in a word, be still and know that I am God. doesn't say run like crazy, right? He says be still. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for the opportunity to come here and worship.
And so, Lord, I just pray that as we sing, we remember who you are. Lord, as we give later, we give with cheerful hearts. Lord, as we celebrate tonight, Lord, with our kids, Lord, you'd, you'd shine bright through them. God, just help us to use this service to serve you well. Help us to be a church. Help us to be the church outside these doors. Lord, we love you. Change us, transform us, call us to yourself. And it's in your name. Amen. Stand together, come on. So what a mystery, oh what a love from heaven to Bethlehem lavished on us. All who are searching, follow the star there in the stable, the hope of.
we close our eyes just for a moment? We're going to sing, We Give You All the Glory. If you want to lift your hands, you can. If you want to come to this altar, you can. It's fine. You worship God however you're led to. Just remember, we're singing, We Give You All the Glory. Lift our heart this morning. We'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the glory. It's many names of, of Jesus. We're just going to say a couple of them. If you would. <clears throat> would you just say this with us? His name is a wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, everlasting father, Emmanuel, holy one, son of God, Savior of the world. Hey, let's say that again, can we? His name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Emmanuel, Holy One, Son of God, Savior of the world.
Jesus, speak to our heart this morning. Anoint the word. Work in here. Move in this place. In your name I pray. Amen. Good morning. Good to see all of you here. Uh, we want to uh, welcome those viewing online as well. Appreciate you tuning in this morning. We're uh, in the middle of a series entitled All I Want for Christmas. We're talking about our wants and desires and how many times the things that we want, the things that we desire, doesn't always line up with what God wants. And so if you... Uh, been a Christian any length of time, if you've uh, experienced God's help in your life any length of time, you, you've realized that uh, it's very important that God changes your desires and your wants to line up with His. And when uh, that happens, it saves us a lot of heartache and uh, we, we begin to see things a little more clearly. Uh, this week I want to talk to you about fears and how that, uh, man, if there's anything that I want for us as a church, uh, something that I'm even working through is that God will, man, sweep away the fears that uh, have seemed to grip our community and our land in the last two years or so. Um, and so I want to give you one verse, Luke chapter 2, verse 10, and then we'll move along to some other scriptures, but... Verse 10, it says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all of the people. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence. I simply ask that you have your will, you have your way. Uh, many times... Even uh, my desire to preach, Lord, perhaps can interfere with what you want to happen. And so, Lord, I pray that you override that today. I, I pray that none of my desires, uh, none of my wants um, become a distraction from what you want to accomplish here today. And I just pray that you simply use me as a vessel, Lord. I surrender to that, that you'll use my words, that you'll use this message for your, your good and your glory. I just pray that everything that is said is pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. We all have different fears. Now, I'm not talking about the fears of spiders and insects or fear of heights or fear of tight places. Um, those are real fears but and they do affect us in some way. But what I'm talking about this morning are some of those secret fears. Those things that cause us to make certain decisions and act a certain way that nobody else really knows except ourselves. They're those fears that control and have a lot to do with our attitude and, and, and our personality. But nobody really knows those things. We kind of keep them under wraps. What, what I'm talking about is fears such as the fear of loneliness. See, some people continue to attach themselves to very destructive relationships because they have this very deep fear of, of being alone. They, uh, they'd rather be with some company 
Even if it's bad company, then no company at all. They'd rather be with somebody, even if it's a a bad somebody, than being with nobody at all. They have this fear of being lonely, and so they constantly uh, attach themselves to, to, to groups or to individuals that are very destructive and negative in their life, and, and, and it all stems from this uh, fear of being lonely. They're not comfortable being by themselves. There's a fear of being genuine. Some people fear that, man, if you really knew who I was, you wouldn't really like it. My wants and my desires are different than y'all's. And the things that I enjoy is different from the things that y'all enjoy. So what happens is many times we just fake the way that uh, we think. We, we act like we pretend that we like certain things. We pretend that we have certain interests just because this group has this kind of interest in that group that we want to fit in. These are their likes, and so we act like those are our likes. And, but in reality, uh, we're, we're completely different. And, and so we, we, we have this fear, well, if people really knew what I was like, if people really knew that uh, these were my interests, they wouldn't really care for me that much. So we, we, we keep all those things under wraps. There's the fear of exposure. Some people fear that sharing some past sin or some past experience that, that they're ashamed of. And, and so they continue to hold on to certain secrets. Because man, if they, if they ever find this out about my past, if they ever knew this about me, it may change the way that they view me. So we, we keep those things secretive. There's the fear of failure. Some people will never experience the depth of real faith because they're so terrified that they may fail. And so they live their life without ever stepping out in faith, ever taking any risk and allowing God to accomplish some big things in their life because they have this deep fear of, of, man, they they just don't want to fail. So they never try anything new. Some people fear rejection. Many will never find a good set of friends or a good job or even a healthy church just because they have this fear uh, of uh, of being turned away and and all those this fear of rejection uh, it overshadows the uh, benefits of curiosity the benefits of having courage. Some people fear that they'll never have enough. Some fear that they'll never be good enough. Some people fear dying. Some people fear never finding true love in a human relational sense. One of the major messages of the Bible is to fear not. It's also a major theme throughout the Christmas story. God tells us to not be afraid or fear not 145 times in the Bible. And it speaks of that several times throughout the Christmas story. In fact, all five main characters in the Christmas story was told, do not be afraid. Fear not. And each time God told them that, he was addressing certain fears. And I want to I wanna present to you those five fears that I, I think could teach us a lesson. Those things, some, a lot of these that we deal with and, and perhaps give you some solutions in how to overcome them. The first one is this. There's the fear of deficiency. There's the fear of deficiency. We see this in the Virgin Mary. Can you imagine? Put yourself in her shoes. Here we have this young peasant girl who was a virgin. She was engaged to a man to be married. And an angel shows up and tells her that she's going to be the mother of God. She's been given the responsibility of raising the very one that will save the world from sin and evil. He's going to be a perfect child and, he's going to, and, he's, and she's being placed with the responsibility of raising this child. Can you imagine Mary crying out saying, God, no, 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 you, you've got the wrong person. This, this can't be me. Surely you're not placing this responsibility. I've never even raised an earthly child, much less a heavenly child. How am I supposed to go? I don't have what it takes. Surely she felt inadequate. Surely she felt deficient in her gifts as a mother. Which led to her response. She she told the angel, how can this be? 
So Luke 1.30, we find the angel of the Lord responding to her. and He says, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. You see, this, was a, this is a confidence issue. We all face this fear at some point. Man, I'm not good enough. I'm not talented enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not educated enough. I'm not qualified enough to be who God's called me to be, to do what God wants me to do. You know, many times, this is a fear that can escalate into some other areas in our life. And You know, I was telling the first service, you know, many times... The Christmas season, I mean, it's hard to preach anything that somebody hadn't heard about. I mean, man, because that's one theme that gets preached year after year after year after year. But there, this, there's this particular issue here that has never come to me. It's never, maybe it has to you, but it's never occurred to me concerning Mary. And it's this idea of, of rejection. Now, r- remember now. She was told that, hey, you are highly favored by God. Now, think about that. Think about an angel of the Lord telling you, you've been highly favored. Think about what what all comes to your mind. Oh, yeah. It's going to be free sailing from now on, right? God has favored me. Everything's just going to fall into place from now on. Everything's going to just be exactly the way they need to be. And everything's just going to be great. Well, she's told that, and one of the first things that happened is her, her, her husband wants to divorce her because he doesn't believe what she's told him. I mean, would you? Think about it. You know, he, here, here's something that it, it was it's very different than anything that had happened before. It isn't like Mary could say, yeah, yeah, I, that, that happened way back. I know God works like that sometimes. Everything's going to be, no, no, no. There was no previous example. And so her husband wants to to divorce her and put her away quietly. Of course, an angel speaks to him and and, and gets all that straight. And then then the next thing, so she's she's pregnant. And and, and then it's time. They they are to, to travel to Bethlehem. About 90 miles what they have to travel. Now, I've never been pregnant before. <laughs> never will. But, but, but ladies, can you imagine being in your third trimester riding on a donkey for 90 miles? I, I, I don't, like I said, I don't know what it feels like, but I can't imagine that feeling blessed. I, I, don't, I don't think it came to her mind, I'm highly favored. No, no. No, no. I, I, I'm sure that was a very difficult time. Not only that, she travels. She, she finally gets to where they're supposed to go. It's go time. And they tell her, hey, we ain't got no room for you. I, 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 don't, I can hear Mary saying, what's going on here? God, I, I thought you said that I was favored. I'm not sure if my husband still believes me. I mean, this is a crazy thing that has happened. I've been riding on a donkey, straddling a donkey for 90 miles. I'm pregnant. I'm mad. I'm I'm frustrated. And and I finally am looking forward to, to laying in a nice place and relaxing and being comfortable. And they're saying, they've got no room. And we we... We're going to have to go find a barn somewhere for this child, which is supposed to be the child of God to be born. I got to thinking about all that. And something occurred to me that I guess I've I just never really thought about it in, in these terms before. But perhaps, perhaps you can be favored by God and not feel like it. Huh? Perhaps you can have the favor of God and not feel like it. You see, you can be favored by God, ladies and gentlemen, and still not be emotionally attached to it. And still not feel like it. 
You see, you may feel like you aren't much because you're tapped out this morning. But the Bible says too much is given, much is required, right? You may not feel blessed because you're in a state of mourning. But the Bible says blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You may feel cast out, rejected, and disliked. But let me remind you that the Bible says blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you. And when they insult you and reject your name as evil because the Son of Man rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. You may feel angry. You may feel like crying right now. Or you may feel like you're walking alone in the night. But let me remind you, the Bible says, For his anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen? You may feel like you're not enough this morning, but I've come to tell you that the Bible says in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been created in the image of God. You can do all things through Christ who's given you strength. Just because you've been born in a barn doesn't mean that God doesn't want to make you a king. Just because there's no room for you in one place doesn't mean that there's not a better place for you. Just because God has shut down something in your life, it doesn't mean that he shut you down. Just because he's canceled some things in your life, it doesn't mean that he's canceled you. Just because God has closed one door, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have another for you to walk through. Church, I've come to tell you this morning that even though you may not feel like it, you're a child of the living God. You've been highly favored. The angel says, don't be afraid. I come to bring you good news that will be for all of the people. There's the fear of deficiency, but let me give you the second one. The second one is this. There's the fear of disapproval. Of disapproval. We see this in the life of, of Joseph. Think about it. Joseph's a standout guy. He's got his life together. He's interested in doing things the right way, and so... He's engaged to this girl and he finds out she's pregnant with a child that's not his. So he makes plans to divorce her. I mean, wouldn't you do the same thing? After all, there wasn't something for him to look back and say, Yeah, God works like this sometimes. I, I guess uh, it's, it's okay. No, no, no. It had never, been, it never happened before. You know, it amazes me when I, when I look back and that's one of the the amazing things to me about uh, reading these characters in the Bible, many times things that had happened, God speaking to them or doing so, it happened for the first time. And, and, and God calling and, and doing, and, and man, they just had to trust it was God. There was, it wasn't like that they could look in the past and say, yeah, yeah, God did this to so and so. and God, No, no, no it, it was the first happening. And so you think about the faith that Mary had to have, that Joseph had to have. It it amazes me today that God calls us and God instructs us and commands us to do things. And we've got a history of God working and delivering and people sacrificing and, and surrendering and God showing up and God delivering. we got thousands of years to look back at God doing all those things. All these examples and we still are hesitant. To follow God. We're still hesitant to step forward. And we've got a litany of examples to choose from. To look back and to see where God provided. Where God rewarded sacrifice and surrender. And yet we're still so hesitant to doing it. Joseph makes plans to divorce her. He doesn't want people talking about him. He doesn't want them disapproving his reputation. But the Bible says in Matthew 120, it says, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife because what has conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. You see, this was a character issue. It was a character issue. Hey, we all face this fear. What what are they going to think about me if I do this? 
I've built my reputation on acting like this. I've built my reputation on conducting myself like this. I've built my reputation off of this. What are they going to think when they hear that this baby's not mine? Uh, above all else, what are they going to think when, uh, when they hear this story? Oh, it, it's from the Holy Spirit. Who would believe that? It's never happened before. This was a character issue. Church, listen to me. Never, never, never forget this. God always attacks your sin. He never attacks your character. He never attacks your character. And, 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 and it's important that you, you realize, always be willing, always be willing to choose God's revelation over your reputation. Because here's, here's what you'll notice. As, as God reveals himself to you, if you become more interested in that, you won't be so concerned about your, your, your reputation. God's revelation to you, God's realness to you will drive out your need to be a certain way or to act a certain way or to fulfill a certain reputation that you may have created for yourself. There's the fear of disapproval. Number three, there's the fear of discomfort. The fear of discomfort. We see this fear in, in the life of the shepherds. Luke 2, 8, it tells us, and, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Now, the shepherd life was very simple. It was very convenient and familiar. If you were a shepherd back then, uh, nine times out of ten, your father was a shepherd, your grandfather was a shepherd, your great-grandfather was a shepherd. It was just one of those things. If you were born in a shepherd's family, that's what you did. It's all you knew. It was just very seldom did, did somebody get born in the family and, and become something else. It was just a, you just continued the family tradition. It was something that ran in the family. It's all that they would have known. So for them, this was very comfortable. It was a very comfortable way of life. It was something that they would never have wanted to deviate from. It was a regular, unchanging way of life. But Luke 2, 9, it says, Suddenly an angel appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and it says they were terrified. And then we find these words in verse 10. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. You see, for them, this was a change issue. It was, a, it was a change issue, a disruption issue. Their fear came from the fact that everything in their life was about to be interrupted, was about to be transformed, was about to be changed. Have you ever been there? You, you, you ever been to a place in your life where, man, everything just got turned upside down? I'm convinced we need a little shaking from time to time. We, 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 we need to, to reevaluate some things. We need to change direction from time to time. Are you willing to make a sudden change in your life to accommodate what God's wanting to do in you and with you? I, I'm, I'm convinced many, many times we, we don't get up. Many times we don't move just because we fear where God's taken us is somewhere that's unknown. That's uncomfortable. Number four, there's the fear of disqualification. The fear of disqualification. We see this in the life of King Herod. Herod was a king. He had power. He had prestige. An entire empire at, at his fingertips. And he liked his position, as you can imagine. And he was terrified that news of this new king would disqualify him. And would cause him to lose all his power. And so we see Matthew 2, 3, it says, When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. And all Jerusalem with him. In other words, he was afraid. Now, this was a control issue. It was a control issue. And man, did this guy ever have control issues. So much so that he killed his brother-in-law, his mother, his wife, and even his two own children. Because of threat. Threats that they may take his throne. So when he gets news that this baby king 
would soon be born, he, he sends his soldiers to kill all the male children under the age of two. All because he's eat up with this fear of losing control. Hey, it, it, it's amazing what we'll do, isn't it? When we have a fear of losing control. Man, people, people will try all kinds of things. People will do all kinds of things. All because they fear that they may lose some control in their life. I'm convinced that many times the reason God can't get on the throne in our life is because we're, we won't allow ourselves to come off the throne. We're so interested in making sure that we control everything that we can't allow God to control anything. Some of us of us need to depend on the Lord rather than use Him as a servant to do what we want. Ladies and gentlemen, He's not just our Savior. He's our King. The fear of disqualification, number five, is the fear of disappointment. The fear of disappointment. This is found in the story of Elizabeth and Zechariah. If you don't know them, this is the parents of John the Baptist. Zechariah was 70 years old. And he had been praying for a long time that he and his wife would have a child. She was barren and, she, and they had prayed and prayed that she wouldn't be barren. That they would finally have a child and, 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 it, and it didn't happen. They prayed and prayed and nothing happened. And so, man, he, he just kind of forgot about it. Time rocks on an angel of the Lord appears to him in Luke 1. And the Bible says that he's gripped with fear. And so we find these words in Luke 1.13. The angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Can you imagine, Zechariah? Uh, what, what prayer are you talking about? No, no, I, 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 I'm 70 years old. Wait, wait, you're you talking about that prayer that I was praying back in my 30s? Is that, is that what you're talking about? God, I'm okay now. <laughs> hey, it's fine. I'm okay. Hey, hey, listen, I was frustrated back then. I, I hated it, you know, but man, I don't work through that, God. It, it's okay, really. Hey, I've learned to live with it. I've learned to accept it. I, it it's okay. Just, just, just leave it alone. And God's like, no, no, you don't understand. The timing is right now. You see, my, my, my son's coming along, and so you, 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 you're, you need to have a child, and this child's going to pave the way for the Savior of the universe. You see, now it's the perfect timing. Mm. Have you ever been there? You ever prayed and prayed for something? God didn't show up. You see, this, this is a care issue. You see, if we're honest, ladies and gentlemen... The reason we don't do what God wants us to do, the reason we don't act anymore is because we really don't care. We, we cared back when we, when we first got saved. Yeah, we had a passion for missions years ago. We, we had a passion to serve years ago when, when God first saved our soul. We had a passion to, to step out in faith when we were young and we had energy. and Man, we were willing to charge hell with a water pistol. But, but for so long, we prayed for God to open a door and to do this, and, and nothing ever happened. And we were just like, well, I, I guess it's just the way it's going to be. It's okay. We just come to accept it. And then God shows up. Okay, now it's time to sacrifice. It's time to move. And we're like, no, no, no. I, I, I don't really care about that, those things anymore, God. My passions and desires have, have moved to other things in this life. I'm, I'm okay without that now. And God's like, no, no, you, you don't understand. My timing is perfect. My timing is perfect. It wouldn't have went well if everything would have fell into place back then. That wasn't the right timing. I wasn't ignoring you. I wasn't putting you off. But the timing wasn't right. For some of you, it's go time right now. You just keep putting God off because he's calling you to do things that you really don't care about anymore.
So how do we overcome these fears? Let me give you a few things in closing. First thing is to surrender your life to God every day. I, I mean, that's, I, I know that's a simple statement, but it's, it's very, very important, ladies and gentlemen. Surrender your life to God every single day. You say, Pastor, calm down. I, I did that 10 years ago. I, I, I did that 20 years ago. No, no, that's the problem. You did it 20 years ago and you hadn't done it since. Every day, Paul said, I have to die. You have to die daily. Listen, man, this is a journey. Man, every day you got to say, God, I need you today. I need your help. If, I, if I'm going to say the right things, if I'm going to act the right way, if I'm going to keep from making bonehead decisions today, I need your help. Every day we need him, ladies and gentlemen. Surrender your life to God every day, man. It's a battle every day. Don't ever forget that. Because you may not fear something now, but you will next week. You will next year. Man, it's, it's, it's amazing what certain things do to Christian people. Man, it eats us up with fears. It keeps us from, from being who God wants us to be, from, from moving forward. Number two, stop listening to the voices of fear. Stop listening to the voices of fear. 2 Timothy 1 7, it says, God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of sound mind. You say, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but for the past probably little few months, three or four months, I, I've been a little chipper. You ever, you, have you noticed? I've just been a little happier recently. You say, you say what, what, what's happened, Pastor? What, 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 I, I still read God's word. I, I, I still pray, you know. I, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm going to church. I'm still doing all that. You say, well, what, well what's different? Let, let, me, let me tell you what's different. You, you can ask my wife. For about three or four months now, I ain't watched the news. <laughs> it's transformed my life. It's transformed my life. And everybody, everybody asks me, hey, man, have you heard what's going on? And I'm like, no, I haven't. <laughs> no, I haven't. But hey, I've heard what's happening at Bethlehem Community Church, though. I do know that God's still on the throne. And so I don't know what's happening overseas. I don't know what's happening over there. But I do know what's happening here in my life and in our church. And man, it's a sweet release understanding all that and not have to worry about what all Satan's doing everywhere else. Stop listening to the voices of fear. Some of you can't get excited about God because you're too wrapped up in what the news is saying. Number three. Sing and praise the Lord, man. Sing and praise the Lord. Praising God is an antidote for panic. Worship is an antidote for worry. Singing is an antidote for sickness. Mary is told as a little girl that she's going to be the mother of God. How does she handle it? Look in the scripture. It's in Luke 146. It says she sang. She sang a song to the Lord. Church, you'd be amazed at what it would do with your negative attitude if you just start singing praises to the Lord. Hey, you'd be amazed at what it'd do for your kids every time they get in your vehicle that, that, that you turn on some Caleb instead of Satan's music. You'd be amazed at it. What it, it just it just make you happier in life. Number four. Set your mind on the promises of God. Set your mind on the promises of God. Luke 1, 45 says, Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Church, you, you cannot base your life off of the explanations of what's going on in this world. You, you can't. You can't. Because you're not always going to be able to understand it all. 
Everything's not always going to make sense. Rocky, worship team, y'all, y'all come on. It's not always going to make sense, man. You're going to be filled with confusions. And, man, things are going to happen. You're like, man, why is God doing this? Why is this happening this way? Man, this don't seem right. You, you can't base your life off of the explanations or, 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 or understandings of, of, of what's going on in this world. But you can base your life off of the promises of God. You see, things may not always make sense. But you can trust whatever God says. You can look at the past. You see, I'm grateful that we don't have to live like Joseph and Mary. And looking back and, and having... Uh, my goodness, we've got a litany of examples to, to look back and say, Man, God has always fulfilled His promise. God has always delivered. He's always showed up in just the right time. We can trust him for that. And he promises to do that over and over and over. And and that's what we have to live by. Don't live by what you understand or don't understand. Because this life will never make sense. But you always got to trust that God's promises are right. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and thank you for this time. Lord, I I pray for those listening today that may struggle with certain fears. Lord, I struggle with some of them. Lord, none of us are exempt from problems and from struggles and trials in this life. But I do pray for those that are dealing with certain fears and maybe some of these kind of reminded them of some things. I I pray that you give them the courage that's needed. Some clarity, Lord, not necessarily in the world, but in you. And the confidence that they need to move forward to be all that you want them to be. With every head bowed and eyes closed. Maybe you're sitting here, whether you're here or you're listening online. You say, Pastor, as I was listening to these fears, the one fear that is really overriding all that is, is the fear that I'm lost. Because I've never been saved and I've never gotten right with God but today I I, I want to be I want to know today that I'm right with Jesus and I'm ready to give my life to the Lord if that's you whether you're listening online or you're sitting here say pastor I'm ready today's the day of salvation for me I'm just going to lead you in a prayer and it's not the prayer necessarily that saves you it's the intent of your heart and if you're serious Today's the greatest day of your life. Whether you're sitting here or listening, say, Pastor, I'm ready. You pray this to yourself. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. And I believe that you died for my sins. I also believe that you rose from the grave to conquer death, hell, and sin. Today, I commit my life to you, and I accept your forgiveness for all of my wrongdoings. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, I pray. No one looking still. No one looking but myself. If you prayed that online, you say, Pastor, I prayed that in a minute. Would you do me a favor? and You just respond in the comment sections with these four words. Just simply say, I prayed that prayer. That's all you got to do. You respond with those four words. We want to make sure that we contact you and answer any questions that you may have and help get you plugged in, whether it's this church or another church. Because you're going to need a support system. You're going to need some discipleship in your life. Maybe... You're sitting here and you say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer and I meant it. Can I see your hand? You just slip it up. Just slip it up gently so that I can see it. You say, I prayed that and I meant it from the bottom of my heart.
I want to, yes, I see that hand. Yes, I see that hand. Just slip it up so that I can see it. Okay. Okay. If you raised your hand, will you look at me? Look at me. Proud of you. Today's a great day in your life. Do me a favor. Step out and come, come, come see me. Come on. Come on. If you prayed that prayer, step out and come see me. I wonder if you're here, you say, Pastor, if, I, if I'm honest, there's some of those fears that you mentioned that I deal with. I just appreciate your prayers at this time in my life. Could I see your hand? Sure, sure. Yeah, see those. Okay, let's stand. We're all standing and we're going to sing. And I just want to encourage you to respond however you choose, however God leads you to respond all I ask is that you make sure things are right with you and the Lord as we close this service let's sing thank you so much for tuning in today if you've made Jesus Christ your Savior or maybe you'd just like some prayer or just some more information about our church do us a favor and email us at the address at the bottom of your screen, or you can just reach out to us through the comment section of whatever platform you're viewing on. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and we hope to see you next week.